welcome back to my channel. My name is Shamika and this is Check the Rhymes. Thank you for joining me today. So I have an exciting guest joining me and we're going to talk about this book. The book is called Grown and it is from critically acclaimed award-winning author Tiffany D. Jackson. Y'all, I read this book in like two days. Look, and it's thick, but it's that good with a T. Um, <laughs> It's this young adult novel is it's I would put this on my must read for for young adults absolutely because it is it's an important read it's very um, it's heavy because Tiffany takes inspiration from the R Kelly case and other cases that have pushed the Me Too movement because it's an abuse of power it's abusive behavior in which young women of color are abused and victimized but people don't believe them and so this story follows enchanted jones and she is a teenager that is you know her her dreams of being a singer um you know that that's all she wants to do and then she meets an r&b singer that takes her under his wing but things don't go the way she planned so this is this story is important so we're going to talk to tiffany about um why it's so important and just kind of her process about writing the book and what she hopes readers take away from it so stay tuned you don't want to miss this show Hi, Tiffany. Welcome to Check the Rhymes. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Girl, let me tell you what. I picked that book up Saturday and finished it by Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I could not put it down. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So you have to tell me, like, how did you, um, one, come up with the idea? And then what was that research process like for you? Because this book is powerful and it's it's heavy and it kind of takes you through a lot of emotions. Well, um, Grown was actually inspired um, mostly from the reaction around the R. Kelly documentary. Mm -hmm. Um, mostly after hearing so many statements like, you know, uh, victim blaming statements like, oh, those girls knew what they were doing and et cetera. I wanted to really write a story that, um, really sort of broadened the scope of actually how girls can be groomed and manipulated and lured into abusive relationships and specifically for kids. Cause I felt like we need to start with them young, learning exactly how these things happen so that they, one, can watch out for themselves or their peers, and two, sort of start believing victims as they grow older. Um, and that's something that is sort of missing from our society. Absolutely. Well, I wondered, um, you know, since it is a young adult book, I was, as I was reading, I was like, well, thinking just as, you know, as an adult, would young adults understand some of the, um, some of the things that Corey has enchanted doing or that she's drinking or, you know, stuff like that and stuff that he has done, do you think they would understand what's going on? I think, I mean, oftentimes, I think a lot of times we sort of grossly underestimate what kids can handle. Because um, mm -hmm. I, I feel like we all like, you know, at a certain time in our lives, we probably, un we probably could have understood more if we were actually allowed and had access to that information. Um, but kids today, you know, they have, they have the internet and they have the ability to look up things and ask questions and find books like this to sort of, you know, and when they want to know more. So the hope is that, you know, they pick up this type of book and they sort of see the story as it plays out and build that empathy muscle for other victims as well too. Um, especially since, you know, a lot of the issue is that they are feeding where they're, this information is being fed through, you know, antiquated logic, like, you know, oh, mm -hmm. those girls were acting grown. And we're trying to basically reprogram them um, away from that type of logic. And, and, you know, we want our society as a whole to stop looking at black girls and calling them grown and adultifying them and over-sexualizing them before they even had a chance to just exist in their bodies. Right. Which actually brings me to my next uh, question, because like you said, um, in, in the, well, a lot of times in our community, in the black community, we have, and all of us have heard it growing up, uh, you know, you're, you're being grown or you, you look too grown or you're acting grown and don't be grown and on and on and on, or you're being fast or you're fast or that girl is fast, all that stuff. So how do you think that that affects women of color as they're growing up and then in, into their adulthood? Well, it completely affects them. It really plays into their psyche, and they start internalizing that particular bias and criticism, start applying it to themselves, and they start to almost use that same rationale to sort of 
blow off some of the things that they potentially are doing or what has potentially been done to them, which is why there's not, and especially when, you know, those same girls uh, rarely get justice that they deserve for any type of business that potentially may happen to them. Um, the fact is, is that, you know, black girls are raised and given a different set of standards than like, you know, and basically any other race, quite frankly. And mm-hmm. this has been happening since our enslavement. And one of the ways that we need to start doing away with that sort of, you know, internalized rationale is to actually start starting with the kids that we have today. To so stop treating them like, you know, that you're doing something wrong just for existing in your body. Like it's not their fault. And I think that, you know, once we start giving kids the tools and start trusting them and reaffirming them and giving them safe spaces, I think that that's when uh, we will really start to see a change in our community. Absolutely. Um, so one of the things that you, you mentioned early on was about the, the victim shaming. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Like, I, I even see it on Twitter now a lot when people, even Facebook, you know, social media as a whole, when the, when the R. Kelly documentary came out, um, it was similar to what Enchanted was going through, you know, where people were saying it was her fault, it, you know, that, that she knew what she was doing and on and on and on. And then there's still that all that huge support towards the abuser. Um, what, how, how do you think, like, I don't even know how you would fix something like that. Um, and that's the thing. It's sort of, and I hate to say it, but I, I, it's one of those things where you have to kind of let it go and start fresh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, and there are ways that, you know, kids can also manage up and teach adults like a better way of thinking and existing. Um, mm-hmm. but for me, like, I know, um, this, book is also near and dear in my heart as well too. Um, My first boyfriend was 22 when I was 15 and this was an entire relationship that I I kept secret from my friends and family and I didn't quite fully understand how inappropriate our relationship was until I was much older because there were so many girls who I went to like even Howard University with who had sort of like that, you know, age difference gap. Um, It wasn't Mm -hmm. until I got much older that I learned about that. Um, But then to hear people criticize and i.e. almost criticizing me for, you know, oh, you did this on purpose or, you know, how can the parents not know? And I'm like, well, are you telling me that you've never kept one secret from your parents ever? Right. Right. Exactly. (laughs) It's almost like they forget what it's like to be a kid and would forget what it's like to be a young adult and make mistakes and, you know, feel that those mistakes, you know, should, I mean, truly your mistakes should not define you um, your entire life. And so therefore I kind of have come out and said like, you know, this is also my story too, not exactly, you know, in enchanted role in terms of I, I'm not, I'm no aspiring singer. I can't sing worth a damn, but <laughs> I, I know what it's like to have a dream that you want mm-hmm. so fiercely that you will do anything for. And that, you know, that is all you, you, you honestly see. Um, and that's what happened to a lot of victims, uh, particularly in the R. Kelly case is that they truly had a dream and that it's not just about the, the, the love of this man who's saying that they love you. It's more about their dreams. And I think that that's mm-hmm. something that, you know, it's hard for adults to really understand because we, as we grow older, we, you know, step away from our passions um, and don't have that fiery energy and hunger in us that don't remember, don't even remember that what that was like sometimes. Um, right. And so hopefully this book sort of like lays that out and reminds kids and adults like what that could be like. Yeah, even, I mean, I, I related because I was in the same situation, though I was more like like Enchanted's age, 17, but the guy told me he was 19, but turns out, I didn't find out till years later, he was really 23 or 24. So it's like, you know, you, you don't, I, I, you know, I didn't even connect the dots into like how probably wrong that, like how wrong that was at the time. And now thinking back, I'm like, no wonder my parents fought me every step of the way. And I just had to sneak around, you know, so I was like, I get it. Like, I totally get it. Um, right. Like, and this, that's, that's the thing. This happens. And right. the idea that all this reaction, all this victim blaming, as if like, you know, these situations are, you know, few and far between. I'm like, no, this is within, with, this is truly within our, our community. Yeah. Um, now you mentioned though that in the, in the, in your author's notes that the book is not about R. Kelly, but it does draw a lot of similarities to like the 
um, documentary or the case that we've, we've kind of been following along in, in the news, but were you afraid that people would kind of think this, this is about R. Kelly? Is that why the distinction was made? Um, it wasn't even so much being afraid, but I really wanted to draw, um, you know, the parallels between this isn't just about one man because there are so mm-hmm. many men who fall right. in the same line. Um, you know, predators are honestly one trick ponies. It's like they all play out of the same rule book and how mm-hmm. they actually, you know, get their victims, quite frankly. And so that that's one of the reasons why I sort of like, yes, this is a singer story. And yes, there is an R&B superstar in here, but this could have been, you know, Bill Cosby. This could have been, this could have been Weinstein. This could have been anyone. It's all about right. the man and, and also the machine around that protects that man. And I think we need to be focusing on the actual machine, societal machine that's actually also still protecting them. Exactly. Um, and another thing I thought of is like, how do you think like, you know, the the big phrase right now is like fake news. So how do you think that fake news in this day and time um, relates to a story like Enchanted? Like her, her story, like it's almost like everybody didn't believe it. But and, and, and even though they didn't say it's fake news in the book, it's, it just seems like that's kind of the reaction. Like they're like, oh, that she's making all this up. You know, that's an excellent question, and that's one of the reasons why this book was so hard to research. I mean, you know, per my other books, like, you know, they are all sort of loosely inspired by real cases, and there were, like, documents and videos and all this kind of stuff. In this case, um, you know, a lot of cases were still ongoing as I was writing Grown, and Mm -hmm. um, it's all subjective in a lot of ways, right, because it's a lot of, you know, you know, believing someone's word, but quite frankly, when – so many people have the same story about one person and they don't even actually know each other. It's sort of like logical conclusions could be found, founded here. Um, right. But it's unfortunate that, you know, now in our society, we have someone like, quote unquote, you know, shouting and screaming fake news that, you know, everything is questionable. And, you know, really it is sort of throws like a monkey wrench in all of the progress that is actually truly being made by like the Me Too movement and et cetera. I, I feel like that that's like the worst part about, you know, our presidency, right? One of the worst, there's so many, but <laughs> one of the worst <laughs> right. parts about our presidency right now is the amount of damage it is doing to actual and factual based um, information that's actually out there and it's making it harder for victims. So why we have to start, you know, small, as I say, as we start with kids, it's because the president is eventually going to be gone. And we need to start, you know, rebuilding our society from the ground up and rebuilding and retraining our kids um, to see victims and believe victims. Absolutely. Um, and for my last question, what do you what do you hope that readers take away from this? Like, I think this book is also important for even adults to read, you know, just, oh, just so that they absolutely. can. Yeah, so that they can talk to their kids about it. Maybe it's something they have like a mini book club or something. But what do you hope that readers take away from the book? Yes, I love that. I truly do love like parent kid like book clubs because, you know, you sort of meet on the same page and talk about something Mm -hmm. and you really sort of, you know, you you honestly you start learning about your kid and learning about your parent in a different light. Um, I'm hoping that kids, I'm hoping everyone sort of gets a broad scope of what victim what a victimhood could be like but it's not exactly how you may imagine it and that there are different ways of being a victim different ways of being groomed and lured and um brought into these type of abusive relationships so most importantly i'm hoping that for girls who are out there who are potentially in these type of circumstances i hope they see that you know uh the main character enchanted was loved by her family and friends and community and they never gave up on her and so I'm hoping that that really sort of you know clicks some gears in place for them to also um, take the necessary measures to take themselves out of loose relationships as well too. Absolutely well thank you again Tiffany for joining me on Check the Rhymes and I hope everybody checks out the book Grown um, you know everywhere where books are sold because <laughs> it's, it's an amazing read and so I thank you for writing it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.